I'm Stuart Witt, the CEO of Mojave Air and Spaceport. This has been an amazing year at Mojave. Uh, Stratolaunch, uh, the Paul G. Allen company Stratolaunch that uh, announced that they would be breaking ground in Mojave in December of 2011, actually moved into their 88,000 square foot low bay a month ahead of schedule, and they plan to complete their high bay to produce the largest airplane ever built uh, here in Mojave. They plan to be in that ahead of schedule in February of 2013. I understand that there's already 80 people working full time in the low bay and that is a new build out on 19 acres in Mojave. Uh, the rocket companies uh, had uh, some amazing accomplishments. Uh, the mast and space systems in Zero and Zombie uh, conducted a number of tethered flights, uh, untethered free flights, uh, it was just fascinating in the skies where they were demonstrating precision takeoff navigation and landing of various family of landers even in very strong crosswinds up to as much as 40 knots. On the unmanned air systems or optionally piloted aircraft front this year we had two firsts. Uh, the Firebird Northrop Grumman was a second generation from the old school design at scale composites. Northrop flew the second gen of that on its first flight last month, which opened up a whole new family of unmanned air systems under an optionally piloted vehicle certificate of authorization from the FAA. This is a big deal. This just adds to our 60-year history in unmanned air systems at Mojave with a whole new family uh, looking well into the future. On the rocket front, we continue to have numerous tests every day. I mean, we've had as many as nine this year, nine in one day rocket tests, uh, a whole host of companies. And now companies are coming from around the states to come to Mojave just to test. To piggyback on existing test sites, uh, we had inner orbital, we had mast and space systems, we had uh, AMPT from Colorado come here, Whitting Hill Aerospace, uh, Virgin scaled, and add that to uh, the number of uh, glide flights of uh, Virgin Galactic nearing the powered flight phase of Spaceship 2, White Knight 2. Uh, you see the development at x of their new family of suborbital craft. Uh, it's just been a wild ride this year in Mojave on the aviation front. Firestar Engineering is another remarkable young company that came to Mojave to find a house to develop and test new green rocket motor technologies and components. This year, Incotech celebrated in October their 20th anniversary. And in the same month, they produced their billionth aircraft fastener. That's remarkable. Uh, a small company that came to town as a supplier to an emerging industry is now the leading supplier of fasteners for composite to metal structures in commercial airplanes. It's a classic outcome of what's possible when you create an environment for entrepreneurs. From the airport side, creating this infrastructure where the innovators can find a home to innovate, to test, and develop, uh, take some thought to try to be out in front. First have to assess what do our tenants need? What do they not, not only what do they need today, but what can we anticipate they will be needing at the end of the year? And we build to it. These people uh, expect and demand access to data. Very high speed, high volume data. This year, uh, we completed uh, airport-wide fiber installation. Uh, we now connected that fiber with number one Wilshire in Los Angeles. We have direct access to the largest pipe in the nation for data. Now that fiber is being extended to the rocket test sites where these companies can watch testing anywhere in the world at very high data rates. Uh, we believe this is one of the biggest attractants we've been able to provide the new tenants in Mojave. Also, just basic infrastructure, water, power, sewer, improving our runways, uh, uh, taxiways, uh, making building sites available, enhancing our environmental assessments, to repairing us for our next licensing phase with the FAA, uh, all of these activities are going on concurrently in 2012. Uh, right now behind me we are completely tearing up and completely rebuilding a brand new runway uh, called 422 as a crosswind runway 
extending its length and lighting it. A great enhancement to the airport for both general aviation and potential returning space vehicles. And so we're constantly trying to position the airport where the business is going, not where it is today. Each year, we are amazed at the revenue we receive from the rail industry. And this last year, we, we actually invested even deeper in our rail yard. And it's amazing now what comes in by rail. I believe in the future, resin will come into this airport and tanker cars and spaceships will go out the other side. I think the, the production line is starting to show signs that people understand that we have a rail yard. Uh, it supports the wind industry currently, the auto industry, specialty freight shipments of all kinds, and I believe sh shortly it will be supporting the aerospace industry. On the uh, facility side, we had a requirement from the tenants uh, a couple years ago to build out an event center. There was no place in the Mojave area where the tenants could hold an all-hands meeting. They had grown to the point where they didn't have their own facilities big enough for everybody to get in one room and have a get-together. So we started working with the community organizers in town who are into the revitalization of Mojave and determined that this community really does need a community center for events, uh, not just for the airport, but for everyone. So my board invested in a joint-use facility uh, for the performing arts, whether it be uh, aerospace events, lectures, training, you name it. So that is our Building 137. Uh, my board allocated $600,000 this year to complete that project. We believe we're going to have that building ready for its first event in the April time frame of 2013. Along that line, every third Saturday of every month, there's an event hosted by locals in the community called Plain Crazy. And it's an opportunity for people who own vintage airplanes to put them on display. So that event has grown and it's become a gathering point for aviation enthusiasts, anybody, kids, anybody who want to come out and see cool airplanes. One of the most successful plane crazies this last year was on a day when Scale Composites held an open house and a job fair. And they parked all of their uh, really cool airplanes and specialty flight test and flight research airplanes on the ramp and 4,000 people attended. And literally, college grads from across the nation piled into cars and drove to Mojave to put their resumes on file with these forward-leaning aerospace firms. It was an amazing day. Another event we hosted this year was for the Office of Commercial Space Transportation with the FAA uh, on an emergency preparedness workshop for the commercial space industry. And from my perspective, we've We've developed a number of lessons learned in Mojave over the last 11 years. We have actually designed and built purpose-built response vehicles for composite aircrafts and rocket-powered aircraft. We have a procedure every day looking at all of the events for tomorrow and ensuring that the various response vehicles are staffed and loaded with the right agents if they're needed. So we put on a workshop of best practices and emergency response preparedness on how we handle explosives, how we handle hazardous materials, how we conduct air quality surveys, and uh, how we give people permission to do very risky things. And I think it was uh, very well received by everyone, the government and the industry. We actually added a new staff member this year, which uh, exponentially broadened our reach into industry and academia uh, and through Karina Dries, an MIT Sloan Fellow and an aerospace professional, uh, and making a, making a remarkable difference in our ability to reach out to the tomorrow's workforce. And we look for very big things in 2013 from Karina. Another thing we've learned at Mojave is that policy matters, words matter. And when policymakers, whether it be Sacramento or other state capitals or at the federal level, say something, people listen. And it, it has a profound impact on the future. To that end, we sponsored Assembly Bill 2243, carried by now Senator Steve Knight, which made its way through both the lower and upper house in Sacramento, both judiciary committees, without a single no vote in California, in this economy, 
about aerospace. Something rather remarkable happened on September 21st over California. It was a touching moment. Uh, the last flight of Endeavor coming down the runways at Mojave and to look left and right at literally the thousands of people that drove here to just be a part of it. And something else happened that day. Governor Brown held a small press conference on the steps of the Capitol in Sacramento to, to announce the signing of Assembly Bill 2243 as Endeavor flew over Sacramento. And millions of people came out of their doors and their offices that day to get a glimpse of Endeavor, a symbol of American ingenuity. I applaud Sacramento. I applaud the governor for his signature and to taking a stand to keep business in California in this emerging new industry. Uh, this next year, we intend to seek uh, minor amendments to 2243, which will do nothing but I increase our ability to retain this industry in California and again be an, a nationwide leader in policy, shaping policy, which is going to be needed to foster this industry nationwide and be a leader around the world. We are also looking at policy on revamping a uh, law that was signed by President Johnson in 1968, shaping the international trade in arms regulations, which regulates rocketry. Uh, we believe the new commercial space industry are not designing weapons, but are designing vehicles to haul products and people to space. And they should not be regulated under the arms treaties, but under the Commerce Clause and so we're seeking legislation at the federal level this year uh, that will help the entire industry. A number of years ago, a very small group of us got together and founded what was then the Personal Space Flight Federation. And several of us at the time believed that there would come a time in the very near future when we would need a standards-based organization and, and a consensus organization that would represent this industry. Uh, that industry has now grown. This year you saw SpaceX launch a privately built vehicle built in Los Angeles to the International Space Station two times and take cargo and return cargo back to Earth. That is something very new. Uh, that company, SpaceX, is one of the founding members of the CSF. This year it was a very high honor of mine to be elected as chairman of the Commercial Space Flight Federation Board of Directors. Uh, I'm excited by the year 2013. I, I, I can see uh, uh, real events happening next year which will capture the imagination of tomorrow's workforce. And they will be occurring in a number of sites around the nation, but specifically here at Mojave. I have three tenants that fully expect to be in powered flight in rocketry. I have two tenants who expect to be in the optionally piloted vehicle arena this next year. Uh, those, uh, those are big deals. We have considerable interest for two different companies for new facilities on Taxiway B and we are uh, in design phase right now for those facilities which I think uh, at this time next year you'll be excited to hear about the accomplishments on Taxiway B. Uh, the biggest thing that we can do and we can focus on from my desk in 2013 is ensuring that we continue to give this industry permission. Permission to develop, to design, to test, to succeed or fail. But America and the world desperately needs Mojave.